Empties are some of my favorite videos to film because there's something so satisfying about fully using up a product. And today I'm gonna give you reviews on everything that I've used up recently. I have a lot of skincare, but also some makeup and other products. So let's get straight into it. Let's start off, let's start in makeup, okay? I have some brow empties. This first one is from Persona Cosmetics. This is their Swipe Up Brow Gel. I wear the shade Blonde. And I actually really do enjoy this product. However, I go through it so fast and it doesn't seem like considerably less product than most other brow products, but maybe it just dries up or I use a lot of it. I don't know what it is, but I fly through this. So that really is the biggest downside. It does have a, a somewhat larger spoolie than I typically tend to prefer for my eyebrows. But will I, what I really like about this it deposits a lot of pigment, but not in a globby way. So because of that, the amount of pigment that it provides kind of bulks up my brows because personally, my eyebrows are like blonde. It looks like I have no eyebrows until I fill them in. And this gives them a little bit of dimension, a little bit of structure, and it actually has really nice hold to it. So my only qualm with this is how quickly I go through it. It really makes me question if it's worth the price just because I swear I use this up in less than a month. Okay, another brow product. This is from Nabla. I mentioned this in my video about products that I won't repurchase when I run out of them, and I ran out of it. This is their brow, oop, whoops, it's their brow define. No, 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 brow divine. And I have the shade Neptune, which is a nice blonde shade. I really do struggle to find brow pencils that are light enough. Like, I mean, don't judge my brows today. I actually feel like I want a little darker than I intended to, but it's hard to find a light brown slash blonde brow pencil that doesn't pull orange. Like it's really challenging to find one that has a bit of a taupe undertone to it. Whereas this I found to be a really natural blonde shade. I mean, it's like a dark blonde, light brown. I also like the micro tip that it has to it. It has a good thin spoolie, so I liked this but I feel like there are a lot of phenomenal drugstore brow pencils, so I'm gonna skip this one. Okay, something I will repurchase, probably not for a bit because I have a lot of powder to get through, but I love the CoverGirl Clean Fresh Powder. I had mine in the shade 120 Fair, and this is just such a good powder. You get a little bit of pigment with this. They do have a lot of shades, and it's not a heavy powder. Um, it's, it's kind of just like, it's like Goldilocks, wait, you know, like the concept where it's not too hot, not too cold. That's this powder. I'm like, it's not too heavy, but it's not too lightweight where it's not gonna lock anything in. It's not too matte, it's not too glowy. It's just a nice, safe powder. It's also smoothing, a really great drugstore option in my opinion. This is incredibly random, but let's talk about a toothpaste. I typically don't share like personal hygiene products in my empties. Like I don't do a ton of like deodorant, soap, toothpaste in my empties. But sometimes I will, just because I get questions about cruelty-free versions of a lot of these products, I know they can be harder to find. So let me talk about the Trader Joe's toothpaste. If you're a Trader Joe's lover like myself, you probably either purchased this or considered picking it up. I don't like it. So this is their peppermint toothpaste. It has baking soda and fluoride, which I will say, I do appreciate that it has fluoride in it because most cruelty-free toothpaste don't, and I recently had a cavity, so that's that's important to me to make sure my toothpaste has that in it. The thing about this, I don't know if it's the baking soda in it, but the texture is so unpleasant. Also, it doesn't foam up like whatsoever, like a lot of toothpaste do, so I don't feel like my mouth is clean, and I get that that's probably in my head, but I feel like I have to use probably three times the amount of toothpaste with this that I do with other toothpaste brands to actually feel like it's doing something. I feel like if you just put on a pea size amount of this, you you start brushing your teeth a little bit and then it feels like there's nothing left on the toothbrush. I really don't like this. I have purchased it more than once. <laughs> It's like one of those things where I'll be at Trader Joe's and I'm like, I need to get toothpaste. Do I feel like stopping at another store? No, I'll just grab this, but then I regret it. So don't recommend it. Let's talk about a lip balm from Drunk Elephant. I have repurchased this before. This is their lippy balm. And this cute, sweet little thing is $18. And I, now, now, okay. I actually don't think I'm gonna repurchase this again. At first I was so eager to repurchase it because I love this balm, but I went through this like concerningly fast. And now I'm like, wait, did I go through the other one that fast? And I'm starting to think, you know, mm, probably not worth $18. It's the same thing with the Persona 
brow gel. It's like, these are both good, but if I'm going through them that fast, that's just not going to work for me. I, unfortunately, I really do love this. So I wish that they gave you a little bit more product. The annoying part is that so much of the lip balm is down here. So the other one that I have, I just like scraped it out for a while, but you, that's annoying to do. I'd rather not. Even the first time I repurchased this, you guys were roasting me like, girl, $18 for a lip balm. And I was like, no, it's worth it. It's worth it. It's so good. And it is one of my favorite formulas, but I just need it to last longer for me to repurchase it. So maybe, maybe in the Sephora sale or something on a discount, we'll see. Okay, I have, let's talk skincare. That was kind of skincare, kind of makeup. I don't know, it was our segue into skincare. Um, I have two sunscreens. This first one, I'm so impressed with myself. Look how giant this empty is. This is the Super Goop Play Everyday Lotion SPF 50. This used to be my holy grail go-to sunscreen. I don't like it as much these days. Sometimes I like it more in the winter, but I wasn't vibing with this in the summer because it is, it's really hydrating in a good and bad way. You know what I mean? If you have super oily skin, I don't think you'll like this. It almost leaves it like a little bit too hydrated. I, I feel like I'm back to the drawing board. Whenever I think I'm loving a sunscreen, then my skin stops liking it as much. I don't know. I used to really love this. Let me know your favorite drugstore sunscreen. The problem is most sunscreens look nice if you apply the same amount of them that you might for a moisturizer. But once you apply enough of a sunscreen to get adequate sun protection, that's when it starts to pill. That's when it starts to give a white cast. So I just, ugh, I have such a hard time finding a good sunscreen that I feel like looks nice and not greasy and not thick when I'm applying enough. Except this one was that and they discontinued this and I'm so, so sad about it. So this is from Ulta Beauty. It's their Shine Bright Daily Moisturizer with Sunscreen. This has SPF 30. It's very fragranced. Didn't like that, like very, very fragranced, but it was one of my favorite formulas to wear under makeup. It did not pill, it's hydrating. It really applies like a lotion. It does have a little bit of that greasy sunscreen finish. These both do, but I would say they're less than a lot of sunscreens, you know? This one I loved. I don't know why Ulta did that. They have some other sunscreens that I might try to see how similar they are to this one. How about moisturizer? This one is from Peach and Lily. I mentioned this in another video that I was like about to be out of this. This is their matcha pudding antioxidant cream. And I did really enjoy this. Honestly, I love so much from Peach and Lily. I feel like most of their products are staples for me. Their glass skin moisturizer is another one of my favorites. This one is good for daytime and it is like fully green. There's not really any left in here for you to see, but I do feel like that green, it's subtle enough, but I could see it having some minor color correcting properties if you have a lot of redness in your skin. And I don't know if that's just in my head. If, if that is you and you've tried this, let me know if you notice it, but it does have a bit of a green tint to it. Speaking of Peach and Lily, I also finished up their Ginger Melt Oil Cleanser. This is the second one of these that I've used up. I love keeping this in my shower. I feel like if you don't like, wait for it, we're gonna talk about this one in a second, but if you don't like, an oil cleanser that's like in a tub that you have to like dig your hands into. You might prefer this. It's it's more of a thin oil, similar to like, I don't know, like you're cooking with an oil. It's that texture as opposed to a solid, like a lot of oil cleansers. I guess that's probably a gross description to say like a cooking oil. That's not true, but I just mean it's more liquefied. This is incredibly effective. I really like this. It is a bit pricey, but I think it's worth it. Like I said, I've gone through more than one of these. Would repurchase, but I have some other oil cleansers I need to get through. Like I kind of have a stash that is a bit embarrassing that I need to work through, but I guess that'll segue us over to this. This is the Pharmacy Makeup Cleansing Balm. This one was limited, I think this was limited edition, peaches and cream. They do a ton of different limited edition scents. This scent I actually really did like. It smells so good, but right now I have the green clean from them in my bathroom. That's the one that I'm using right now. I will say, out of all the like solid cleansing balms like this, theirs is my favorite. That being said, you can dupe it. Like there are good drugstore alternatives. Elf makes a great one. Verst makes a great one. I know Good Molecules has one that I wanna try, but you don't need to splurge and spend high-end prices for this. But if you want to splurge, this is the best high-end one that I've tried. Actually, it's just the best one in general. This is my favorite for like the solid version. Okay, 
Um, sticking with, <laughs> that's not true. I was gonna say sticking with drugstore. Kelly, that wasn't drugstore. Anyways, how about popping over to drugstore? Good Molecules Hyaluronic Acid Serum. I used this one up. This is a pretty unique, well, I guess not so unique, but what I will say is this is a thick hyaluronic acid serum. So depending on your preference, it's, it's such a strange texture and I almost feel like the thickness caused me to use it up faster. Like I feel like I went through it really quickly. That being said, very hydrating. I also think that thick texture just leaves your skin feeling so smooth and plush. Honestly, like I feel like Good Molecules really doesn't let me down. It's a great affordable option and my skin really does love hyaluronic acid. Would repurchase. Okay, one that I already have repurchased, the Pharmacy 10% Niacinamide Night Mask. I'm even debating buying another backup of this in the Sephora VIB sale. If you were to ask me, Kelly, behind tretinoin, what is the number one, pro no, ooh, maybe this is my number two, wait a minute. Right now, my second product behind tretinoin is probably the Peach Slices as Leg Acid. My skin loves that stuff, but behind that, I cannot live without this. I don't care that it's like $50 with tax. I will keep buying it over and over and over. I'm either on my third or fourth one of these. My skin is obsessed with this. I, if I can find a dupe, I will be so happy. I would love that. But if I could never find a dupe, I don't care. I'll just keep buying it. It is the most hydrating night mask. Like it is magic. My skin could be so peely and flaky, which lately it is. Actually, you might see my chin right now. It is literally flaking. I, even before filming, I was like trying to get the flakes off because I was like, it looks like I was eating food and I have crumbs on my chin, but it's actually just me peeling. But this is like one of the few products that I could put on the night before and then the next morning, it's gone. I love this stuff. So hydrating, smoothing, great for texture. Like I will be glowing the next day. It's magic. One I probably won't repurchase. Again, it's just, it's a good product, but it's not worth the price to me. And it is the Drunk Elephant Jelly Cleanser. Now, I don't think this is unreasonably priced compared to other high-end cleansers, but that is just one category in my routine where I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna buy the drugstore option if I can. I don't think you necessarily need to splurge on your cleanser. If anything, it is probably the category you can spend the absolute least on. That being said, this is a very good cleanser. It's a gel formula, but it's not stripping. I find it to be incredibly gentle. It lathers up pretty well. I think it's really great as my second cleanse after I've gone in with an oil cleanser. I will miss this, but I probably won't repurchase it. Okay, a few more I won't repurchase. This one is from Pure Cosmetics. I had really high hopes for this. This is the Go With The Glow these are nice in my drops. And I was kind of thinking they were trying to do something like this, the Glow Recipe Dew Drops, which are empty too. I'll talk about in a second. If you were wondering the same thing, these are nothing like those. Um, first things first, this is so fragranced. The only way that I used this up was using it on my body. And that's what I tend to do when I don't really like a skincare product enough on my face. I don't like to waste it, so I'll use it maybe on my chest or my arms which is nice because I feel like we can kind of neglect this area when it comes to skincare. And it's not as sensitive, so I don't mind as much that this is super fragranced, but I did not like this. I mean, it is hydrating, but the funny part is they put alpha hydroxy acid in this. So then I feel like nice in my drops makes you think it's something you'd want to put on in the morning, like below foundation. At least that's what I think, because that's how I like wearing this but then you shouldn't necessarily be wearing that in the daytime. Also, when I hear niacinamide drops, I think of it as something a little bit more hydrating. I think of it as something that's gonna really help my barrier, but then it has that exfoliator in it. So I don't know, kind of a weird formula. This I did not mind, actually. I don't think I'm gonna repurchase it, and I did finish it off using it on my chest, but I don't mind it, really. It's from Acure. It is their Resurfacing Overnight Glycolic Treatment. No fragrance on this. I really appreciate that. It has glycolic and lactic acid in it, so it is a somewhat gentle exfoliating product. It's not my favorite exfoliating product, but I do appreciate that it's a bit more affordable. Like I said, I probably won't repurchase this, but I, I did like it. Okay, two from Glow Recipe. First one, Dew Drops. I already have a backup of these. I really love this. I mentioned these in my Sephora VIB star recommendations. I think this is just wonderful under makeup if you have dry skin. I also finished up their Avocado Ceramide Recovery Serum. I liked this, but it wasn't a big enough standout for me to repurchase. Like all of their products, it is fragranced. They do use, they well, this one's like less fragranced, but they do use like natural ingredients for those fragrances. Not like they're putting perfumes in there, but I, I still wish they were unscented. This was nice and hydrating, 
but I don't think it like stood out to me over some of my even drugstore options. So for the high end price point, I won't repurchase that one. Though I do think Glow Recipe always nails packaging. Like these are just really cute. A mini that I used up and it took me forever to use up and I use this so often. Like look how small this is. And it took me probably six months to use it up. This is from Pharmacy. It's their Honey Potion Plus Mask. So this, I miss it already. I miss it so much. It's really a phenomenal mask. I'm thinking about purchasing a bigger size in the Sephora sale. So this is a hydrating mask. You, It kind of does feel like honey. I mean, honey is one of the ingredients, but you put it on, you rub it in for like 30 seconds. It heats up a little bit. And then after that, you let it sit on as a mask. It's super hydrating. My skin loves it. It smells nice because of the honey, but I... Yeah, it really does just smell like honey. I actually kind of want to eat it. Another one, I just talked about this in my video about drugstore products that are better than high end. This is the Bioma Moisturizing Rich Cream. I used up the pink version of this, which is their lighter cream or lighter hy hydrate or what am I saying? A moisturizer? That was in my last empties. I really do love both of these. This one is a little bit more hydrating where the other one's a little bit more lightweight. The only downside that I will say is I find that I used both of them up pretty quickly. And then when I was looking, it looks large. You know, it's a, a bigger container. So you think, oh my gosh, I'm getting a lot. You're getting 1.69 fluid ounces. It's not like offensively small, but you, you're likely to use it up a bit faster. And I do think that's important to note considering it is a lower price point, but you might be repurchasing it a bit more frequently. That being said, I love this. I love the pink one. I would repurchase both of them and I probably will repurchase both of them at some point. I'm surprised I did not have any hair product empties this time around, but because of that, that's gonna go ahead and complete this empties video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.